The devotion of the Angelic Warfare Confraternity is a devotion to St. Thomas Aquinas. When he became a Dominican, his parents didn't like it so much, and so his parents and brother locked them in a family castle. then closed the door behind her and drew a cross on the door and knelt down and prayed. And he asked God, please, Lord, let me live pure. It said that when the angels came to visit him in that room, they wrapped a cord around his waist, a cord of purity. And it said from that moment, he never was tempted against chastity again. The Angelic Warfare Confraternity is devotion, devotion that helps people to grow in purity. And it's a confraternity because it's not just a singular thing, but we pray as a group and individually to help each other grow in purity itself. Uh, confraternities have been around the Catholic Church for many, many centuries. Uh, what we see is there are usually collections of people, quite often led by a singular devotion, let's say a confraternity of the, of the Rosary or maybe a confraternity of the Brown Scapular. And we see that they've had this great way to utilize the power of prayer collectively in the mystical body of Christ, yet for a common cause or theme. And what they do then is it ends up spreading the graces from God collectively. So there's times where others are maybe a little stronger in their devotion to the confraternity, but knowing that maybe perhaps there's someone who's not being able to be as devoted. So even though it's not meetings and, and memberships, but it is usually enrollments of some kind, that it is using the power of the mystical body of Christ to pray around a common cause. So welcome this evening to the solemn enrollment in the Angelic Warfare Confraternity. We'll begin as we should begin all things, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're glad that you're here, and we should begin this ceremony uh, with an invocation of the Holy Spirit, for in all that we do, we need the Spirit of the Lord to help us to grow in purity and holiness. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created. One of the biggest realities of our very creatureliness in view of our Creator is that we need grace. And grace is the participation in the divine life, when we think of the Latin word for that, auxilium, helps from God. So when we think of the life of grace, primarily we see how it comes through the virtues. We have the infused theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. But then also we think about our cardinal virtues, uh, prudence, justice, fortitude, and most specifically for our life in the body, the virtue, the cardinal virtue of temperance. And with God's grace, through our prayer and participating in the sacramental life of the church, especially when we're in need of God's mercy, uh, that we're renewed in grace. And then the life of grace builds on our human nature. And then how do we live out that? Through our habits, our actions, our thoughts, our desires. And then what happens too in a specific way the virtue of temperance is where God gives us the grace to grow in matters of food, drink, and sex. These are our appetites, our good God-given natural appetites. But of course, they need moderation and they need to be used for our specific, uh, or for the specific ends that God created them for. The virtue of chastity is important in our culture, but really in every culture, because it's about desiring, right? When we don't desire rightly, we end up finding only misery. 
But when we desire that which will actually fulfill us, then will we find happiness, satisfaction, contentment, all those things that people want. And the only way to do that is to have a pure heart, a chaste heart. If we are growing in one virtue, the good news is that by grace, and since they're all connected, both the theological virtues and the cardinal virtues, we're going to end up growing in all of them. So if there's an increase in our prudence, there's got to be an increase in our temperance. So if we're smarter about the decisions and actions that we make that might help us avoid temptations of the flesh, then we're growing in all the virtues. You may be seated for a few moments. So we have gathered here this weekend, or almost weekend, to march for life. And we are asking, we are demanding, in fact, that all life be respected from before birth, from conception, until death. But as Catholics, we're not just looking for a legal solution to the culture of death. But in fact, what we are searching to do is to build up a culture of life. And that culture cannot be brought about by the passing of laws or even by the strength of men and women. It can only be brought about by the conversion of heart brought to us through the grace of God. Because the only way in which life will be a life worth living is if we seek the one who can satisfy each and every one of us has within us a desire, a longing for fulfillment. Chastity is important to me because it frees us to love God with our whole hearts, and it frees us from um, things that would bog us down in this world. When we have a chaste heart that allows for a kind of harmony between mind and soul and heart, then we can actually reach out for that which will fulfill us and not be distracted by the lower things that may satisfy us for the moment, but in the end, leave us empty. Of course, one of the most difficult and saddest realities of the nature of our sins of the flesh against chastity, against purity, really what happens? The other becomes objectified. But in actuality, when the graces and the cooperation with them and the growth in the virtue of chastity and purity are lived out, then what happens is an immense freedom takes hold not only within, but then with your relations with others. So there really is a brotherly, sisterly love that can establish between men and women. Uh, and then also in a special way, that one you might meet that you're called to marry, perhaps if that's your vocation, this will then echo into that. And then, of course, even those who are called to the consecrated life or those who are called uh, to a, a religious or maybe even a priestly vocation, that has to be lived out, to have this authentic freedom, to have this uh, just open heart to God and to the other. Then objectivity of the other goes away, uh, the life of virtue grows, and then chastity and purity become a great force. And interestingly enough, it shows you the world really as it is, both for its ugliness, but also for its God-given beauty. Each and every one of us has within us a desire, a longing for fulfillment. And that longing for fulfillment cannot be had by trying to possess the things of this world or lusting after other men and women. It comes about only through union with Jesus Christ. And so, when our hearts are set on Jesus Christ, are oriented towards God, our hearts are purified. And then not only can we begin to live our own lives to the fullest, but we can begin to respect the lives of others. For with a pure heart, we can begin to see in each and every individual that we come across the true image of God whether that person is struggling with various issues or not. Each and every human being that we come across is an image of God. And when our hearts are made pure, and we can begin to see that image in the other, then we'll begin to honor that person as a child of God with the dignity that he or she deserves. And so the building up of a culture of life requires the purifying of our hearts, and the purifying of the heart of society, so that our society no longer becomes one seeking after possession, but rather 
seeks to honor God above all things. Well, we think of the Beatitudes, right? Christ left us the Beatitudes. And we think quite often, oh, well, they're just for when we get there in heaven. Well, of course, we call heaven the beatific vision. But in actuality, when we try to live the life of the Beatitudes, the great Sermon on the Mount, Christ's greatest homily there from the Gospel of Matthew, he says, you know, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. And of course, St. Thomas Aquinas teaches us is that one of the greatest pleasures of heaven will be seeing God, face to face, seeing God as uh, beholding Him. But also now, if we begin to live our heaven now instead of our hell now, well, what happens? then we begin to see these previews of heaven. So in the life of chastity and purity, then our purity of heart becomes internalized. It's lived out with each and every waking day. And then we end up seeing God, the imago Dei, as we say in Latin, right? In the other. So this great, beautiful uh, encounter with our creator ends up coming through his very creatures, our very brothers and sisters. I'm really happy that I decided to enter the angelic warfare confraternity. Um, I think that it's a brave thing to do because it does ask a lot of us, but um, with the power of intercession and being in a community together, the graces are really present to be able to take this step and to be brave and chaste in this world. There's hope. People who struggle with sins and against purity often think there's no hope. Because it has to do with desire, they know that they desire things that are not helpful to them, but they don't know how to change. And so they think they can do a little bit, but not enough to significantly move themselves towards a pure life. And that's why it's important that you have an avenue of grace to assist you and friends to help you, that there is hope. You can live a pure life. No matter how bad it is now, by the grace of God, you can find happiness. You know, there's that great tradition among the Amish to do barn raising that's still practiced to this day, where the whole community comes together over a single cause, in this case to raise someone's barn and perhaps get their land ready. And it's gone up almost in an afternoon, or it's gone up in just the course of a few short days. And it's a community coming together for one particular person. So in a way, the confraternity and the power of prayer do that. So as individual members, we can have the strength and the grace and the solace knowing that my prayers are going somehow mystically going to affect one particular person maybe or maybe many whoever God uh, needs to or however God needs to distribute the graces to those particular members of the confraternity at that time. I would say to a person struggling with sexual impurity um, to really pray for the grace of God because only grace can really help you overcome something like that and um, that's why it's so important to stay close to the sacraments to go to mass and to speak with uh, a good holy priest. Chastity is important to me because um, I would be dead without, um, without chastity physically and spiritually. I was dying, living an unchaste life. Um, and by the grace of God, I, uh, and really through you know, private revelation and, uh, and, and help and support of friends of faith, my small faith group, especially lay Dominicans in the Angelic Warfare Confraternity. Um, God uses all of it, you know, to save me, and thankfully I cooperated with His grace. I would say to someone who's struggling with sexual purity to never do it alone. I think that that's one of the most dangerous things anyone can do, it is to think that they're an island. Especially with sexual sin, we need people to help us out. I've never seen someone who thought that they could do it on their own, especially in regards to sexual sin, that has ever succeeded. So we do think that uh, our spiritual battles are just between us and the enemy or between our broken, weakened human nature and our bad habits, then we're going to set ourselves up most likely for failure. We have to realize, what's the original community? God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So man is meant to live in community. And that even means that a community of like-minded people who are trying to grow in virtue or grow in grace is needed that we can't do it on our own. Not only can we not do it on our own from the relationship of the creature to the creator, but we can't do it on our own in relationship to each other. So we do need to surround ourselves with like-minded people or people who are trying to grow in certain areas, especially this virtue of chastity and purity. And thus we influence each other, we pray for each other, we hold each other up. 
Because if it's just this individualism or I can just do it by myself, then we end up fooling ourselves. We'll shut ourselves out to graces that both we can receive from God to grow and then also graces we might receive from the instrumentality of others that he uses in our life. So that's why the opportunity to be involved with a confraternity or the great tradition Catholicism has of these centuries of confraternities realizes that we're not alone and we're all obtaining graces and strength and growth for each other. And the Angelic Warfare Confraternity, now it's a strange name, I know. You know, it's been given to me, I didn't make it up. It comes to us for several reasons. Why is it called angelic? It's angelic because of our great patron, St. Thomas Aquinas. First of all, because he's the angelic doctor. The devotion of the Angelic Warfare Confraternity is a devotion to St. Thomas Aquinas, whose marvelous writings, whether it be the Summa Theologia or any of his many other writings, speak to us about the mysteries of God, clarify them to, for us in a way that many others have failed to do. And so he also wrote a lot about the angels. And it's probably because he had a very close experience of them when he was younger. And so his marvelous chastity, which allowed him such a clear vision of God, was an example to others. And after his death, people flocked to him for prayers. But not just his body, but a cord. It said that when the angels came to visit him in that room, to give him the promise of God that he would live purely, they wrapped a cord around his waist, a cord of purity. And that cord was preserved in one of our churches in Italy, and people began to come to ask for his intercession. And from devotion to the cord of St. Thomas arose the angelic warfare confraternity, because people began to have cords of their own touched to his and wrapped around their waist. And they found in this marvelous relic the grace that they needed to overcome sexual sins in their own lives and in the lives of others. To be a member of the Angelic Warfare Confraternity, you wear the cord or the medal constantly as possible, and you pray 15 Hail Marys every day and two prayers for purity. What do we say every Sunday when we recite the Creed? We believe in things seen and unseen. So interestingly enough, you think of the name of our particular confraternity, the Angelic Warfare Confraternity. Well, the angels are here to help us. They're our assistants. It's very easy for us to uh, trivialize or forget about the role of the angels. But the angels are God's creatures. Of course, they're beings with much higher intellect than ours. Uh, and all of us have a guardian angel. And uh, never forget this too. If you've gotten a guardian angel, that means they passed the test. They said yes to God. The angels have always been messengers or they've healed or they've protected. So all of those roles and functions and responsibilities that God has given to the angels uh, from the very beginning of creation, uh, those are going to be carried through in this confraternity as well. Otherwise, we should just get rid of the name angelic. But that's not the case. We do have the name angelic. So it's not just us as mere brothers and sisters in Christ praying for each other, but it's the help of the angels against who? The demons. St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Ephesians, that the warfare, it's not against flesh and, and bone, but principalities and also powers. So if we leave out the supernatural realities of such a confraternity, and especially with the help of the angels, uh, then we're gonna be lacking on something. Chastity is very important to me because I think that we very much need to counter the current concept of free love. I think love isn't free, I think, G.K. Chesterton said it best when he said, the common man likes to be bound by love. And so I can't think of a better way than wrapping around my waist the same girdle that St. Thomas Aquinas did. But because life in the church is not just about a personal growth, it's also about a communal growth, my Dominican brothers then began to organize it into a confraternity, which is a fraternal organization, essentially. You know, we Dominicans don't necessarily have a spirituality like the Jesuits or the Carmelites have. We have a way of life. And the confraternity is a way that you can share in our life. I first heard about the Angelic Warfare Confraternity at Providence College, which is the Dominican-run school. And actually, I learned it from Father Ambrose Little. Um, so I always had the desire to be part of it and never really had the courage to do it until this opportunity. And I just thought, alongside the March for Life, it was such an appropriate time to really have the courage to take part in it. 
I'm a member of lay Dominican, lay fraternities of St. Dominic, St. Catherine of Siena chapter in uh, Philadelphia. And um, actually most, if not all, of the uh, our members are in the fraternity, so that's how I first heard about it. I'm a student at Dominican House of Studies, getting a master's in theology, um, so I heard about it from the Dominicans. First met the Dominican Friars uh, working with John Carroll uh, Catholic High School, also down in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, I actually studied with one of them while I was getting my master's degree in education. I went to school at the Ave Maria University in Florida, and they came down there um, for our student orientation, and then I was accepted here to study in the doctorate program at the Dominican House of Studies. When you become members of the confraternity, not only are you praying for yourself, but you're praying for your brothers and sisters in the confraternity to help them to grow in purity. And not only do you receive each other's prayers, but you also receive the prayers and graces merited by any Dominican throughout the world. Whether he be a brother or a priest, whether she be a sister or a nun, any Dominican throughout the world who merits grace, you have access to their aid through the Angelic Warfare Confraternity. Now why is it warfare? Well, all of us know that the struggle for purity and chastity really is that. It's a struggle. It's a warfare. And we need the assistance of our brothers and sisters, and we need the help of our angels and also of the saints to help us to fight off the evils that tempt us. I would say to a person struggling with sexual impurity, you got to get in the Angelic Warfare Confraternity confession and holy, frequent confession and holy communion are paramount. Um, spiritual direction, if you can find a spiritual director, a priest that you can, you know, go to frequent confession and talk to. And, and small faith group, you, you gotta be in, you gotta be part of a small group of faith, um, even if you don't become a, uh, you know, lay Dominican or in a lay order, there's jo join a small faith group and these brothers or sisters you can lean on will really help you. And I've, I've done all that. That's really been, uh, again, by the grace of God, he's uh, worked through them to help and heal me. So the Angelic Warfare Confraternity is for everyone. Uh, people might think, oh, isn't this just something for college students or young people who are trying to discern their vocation of marriage. But in actuality, uh, enrolled members include uh, religious, consecrated men and women religious who are trying to live out uh, their vow of chastity that they make. Also, uh, one thing the church teaches, and this is important to remember, that purity and chastity also enters into the vocation of marriage. That the husband and wife, even though they are gr the great gift of self to one another that brings new sacred human life into the world, they also have to live out that call to chastity and purity within the marriage to have their love authentically flourish. So we have many married couples in the angelic warfare confraternity as well. And of course for the priesthood as well. Uh, many priests were enrolled in the angelic warfare confraternity because the Satan has big Satan has big targets, you know, with the priests and religious. So we need to be involved in that battle as well. So it's open to everyone. And so not only do you join a fraternity, but tonight you are joining an army. An army that seeks not only to purify the members of that army but also to purify society through our example and through our prayers. And so if you're still willing to join us, we'll continue with our ceremony. So please stand. Are you determined to observe faithfully the obligations of the Angelic Warfare Confraternity, to guard holy purity, to seek the truth, to cherish Our Lady of the Rosary, and to honor St. Thomas Aquinas as your patron? Yes, Father God. As you preserve St. Thomas Aquinas from stain of body and soul by girding him with the cord of chastity through the ministry of the angels, you may deign to bless and sanctify these cords and medals to your honor and glory, so that whoever reverently carries and wears and bears them may be purified from all uncleanness of mind and body and may merit to be presented worthily to you by the hands of the angels in his or her passing from this life. You who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. By the authority conceded to me, I receive you and enroll you in the confraternity of the angelic warfare and make you sharers in all the graces, indulgences, privileges, and spiritual benefits of the said confraternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.